Madam Chair, colleagues, good afternoon to everyone. We all note that all the top military and, and uh, PNP officials are here, and I, I recognize and I honor you for, for coming here voluntarily. Um, so are the members of the cabinet, and we thank you for candidly answering questions for more than five hours yesterday, and I suppose going on five hours also today. And yet, sadly, we do not have Chairman Iqbal. No, I am I'm familiar with the letter that he has sent, and yet I must express my dismay that it required the chairperson of this committee to point out that this is an official proceeding of the Republic, that invitation have been sent, and we did not even get a courtesy of a response as to what was the answer of the Central Committee until the chair had asked, how come we don't have a response? So we did get a response today, and that basically tells us that Chair Iqbal will come at a later time, and again, we also thank him for that. But again, I also express my concern that this is also an official proceeding. We have timelines. We cannot go by MILF's timelines. This is the Republic of the Philippines, not the Republic of MILF. So the timelines are set by this committee. And that is why I feel that for MILF chair to come when they deem it convenient for them is already a disrespect for this committee. Having said that, I also would like to express my concern on the request for a executive session. These members of the armed forces and of the PNP and of the cabinet have come here voluntarily, have basically shown the whole world our faults, our shortcomings, have been criticized in public. Personal yan sa kanila, dahil these are titles, these are rankings that they have worked for. And they allowed themselves to be criticized, to be questioned by non-military personnel such as me, for which I thank you for. And yet their counterpart, the MILF, will be questioned in private. Parang hindi ho tama yun. Hindi ho tama na lahat ng tanong, lahat ng pagsisisi, nababaling po sa mga opisyal natin. Dahil sila po ay nagbigay galang sa ating committee. Hindi ho tama yun. So yun ho ang aking nais iparating sa committee na to, na iparating din ng ating um, peace panel, ng ating negotiators, that it is not fair. This is, this is not fair playing ground even now. It, it, it was not fair on the field, and it is not fair now. This is not how we proceed. So I feel very strongly about that, Madam Chair, and I hope the committee will take that into consideration when we, they review the request of Chair Iqbal for, in, for an executive session. On that note, I would also like to put on record that I have followed with dismay and frustration the response of MILF on the return of the firearms and the personal belongings. It has taken 15 days, more than two weeks. Nalibing na po ang ating SAF 44. Siguro po nalibing na rin ang mga MILF na nadamay at ang mga civilian para lang sagutin na ibabalik ang government property 15 days. This is who we are negotiating with. I was part of the group that went to Spain para pag-aralan pag ang autonomous region nila doon para bigyan suporta ang BBL. Pero a delay. Sabi nga nila, justice delayed is justice denied. How can we proceed this way? 15 days to confirm that they will return? Official, official property, 15 days to honor the dead by returning the cell phone, which is the only thing that a mother or a wife can look at? Wallets, pictures. I have so much respect for those who have spent their time on this peace process, the process, yes. But also respect what has happened today. What has happened in the last 15 days? We're basically saying that none of these things matter except the signing of the BBL. That is the message that many of us hear, that many of those in the public hear. And that is not the right message. Yes, peace should be pursued at all costs. But what will the process be? So 
let me now proceed with my questions, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I think most people know, but let me put it on record, that I have absolutely no military training. I have never been in combat. And I don't feel I have the right to ask you any technical questions. But I am a female senator elected by the public, so I will ask questions that mothers, that wives would want to hear. So let me direct everyone's attention to the AFP report, um, wherein there was a timeline and I read, um, these are based on my notes already, no? at 5.42 a.m., Director Napenas called and asked if they can be provided for assist, that if they can be provided with assistance. There's many, many other things happened between 5 a.m., let me jump to 11 o'clock, 11.08 in the morning. And the text message was, the pinned down SAF group is just 1.2 kilometers away from Highway Mama Sapano, Mama Sapano and, near, and the nearest SAF team is 700 meters from the highway. In other words, 500 meters na lang ang layo nila dun sa nangangailangan ng tulong. I do not understand as a civilian why between 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then let me now jump to 5.30 p.m., which is the next text message that says there is now movement in the area of conflict. So there's 500 meters, and all that time, wala tayong magawa. I know that is technical, but somebody has got to explain this in non-technical terms so that mothers and wives parents will understand bakit hindi nasaklulohan. May I direct the question from someone in PNP and then someone from the armed forces and perhaps um, Secretary Rojas because it was his response earlier today that also helped give me a better understanding. In fact, to make it simple, I'll ask my next question and then just answer it together. Um, yesterday, paulit-ulit kung naririnig yung time on target. First time ko marinig kay Secretary Rojas yung fire on location. Meron palang order na ganun. And so I asked my seatmate here, Senator uh, Honasan, a graduate of PMA, to help me understand who gives that fire on position ba? Oh, eh, whatever it is, somebody please clarify. Understand who gives that order or request na, sige na, bombahin nyo na kami, baka nga meron sa aming mabuhay, baka halos lahat kami mabuhay, kesa sa wala. Who gives that order? And my seatmate here, who was the baron of his class, humbly tells me, I'm not the expert, Pia. But he understands it better than I, and he said that that should all be in the operational plan. Hindi na to dapat pinag-iisipan pag nandun na. So help us understand um, I, I also submit that um, there is the Board of Inquiry that said earlier that they are simply presenting the facts and the anal analysis will come later. I respect that, but just help us understand for now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Senator uh, Cayetano. Uh, on the uh, fire on my position, there was no order, there was no... From what I understand, there was no order that was given, but it is a concept that is uh, accepted and discussed, no? that in crucial, dire, desperate situations, uh, ground commanders have been known to ask for fire support, whether by air or artillery, on their own position, because they are at risk of being overrun. And by being overrun, they will either all be killed. And so the, 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 the concept is, paputokan nyo na kami, kasi at least kung naka-foxhole kami or naka-hukay naka, naka kami ng kung ano, ay baka may chance na ma-save kami kaysa ma-overrun. Uh, I, I, I'm not, uh, I did not go to uh, PMA, I, I don't know. But I know that that concept does exist. And... Uh, rightfully so, that request uh, will be made by the ground commander who, who is at risk 
of being overrun because in effect in effect he is it's almost like asking for an experimental drug sa cans di ba bigyan niyo na ako ng experimental drug kasi kung hindi niyo naman ako ibibigyan nitong gamot na ito mamamatay na rin lang ako sa cancer eh di ba so ibigay niyo na sa akin parang ganun yun eh so the only person that can make that decision is the is the person concerned no? so it would seem to me that uh, the person who can ask for that is the commander on the ground that is at risk of being overrun, which would be, the uh, in this case, the 55th. Uh, I, I, again, no, hindi ko po, you know, in hindsight, everybody's expert. Hindi ako nagmamarunong dito. Parang yung Monday morning, everything that happened on Sunday, parang anlinaw-linaw. But at that time, we don't know. Um, and the only reason I brought that up is because nung nagkaroon na ng grid coordinate, uh, tanggap ko na meron doktrina, yung AFP, na it's not just important to say where you are, it's also important to say nasaan ang kalaban. It's also important to say ano ang layo. No? Because may mga, may mga distances yan. Eh, no? uh, ganun pa man, kung ganun ka desperate yung situation at at hindi ko alam kung ano yung, ano yung communication na nangyayari uh, between the command posts of the SAF and the command posts of the AFP, between the commander of the 55th and his command posts. Hindi natin alam yung, yung ano yung mga komunikasyon nun. Uh, but it would seem to me that that uh, that could have been a possibility. Nauup wala na silang excuse me lang let me just check my facts no at the time okay as i said as i said po uh, madam chair everything is clearer after the fact no the survivor of the 55th uh, si uh, P.O. Lalan. Lalan. P.O. 2 uh, Lalan said na naubusan sila ng bala. But know that we only know that after he was recovered na. Di ba? Hindi naman natin... Yung, yung madali magsabi, wala na silang bala, kaya better na pa patakan na sila ng artillery but we don't we di, we we only know that from PO2 Lala now na nagre-recount siya na naubusan sila ng bala no so uh, yun lang ang point that, that that I wanted to bring up at that time no uh, for example had there been had there been communication although that's not established I want to be very clear no maingat na maingat po ako rito because nakasalalay po rito yung tiwala ng ating uniformadong hanay sa isa't isa eh. Diba? So we have to be very, very careful. No? So had we known at that time na meron ang ganong komunikasyon, wala na kaming bala, naubusan na kami ng bala, at that time, then judgments could be made na, diba? but wala namang ganong komunikasyon. But the just, fact that naubusan quick, sila ng bala, we only know comment, now. Just a quick comment, both of us are civilians. Yes, so tayo, hindi natin alam kung kailan maubusan, pero I would think these people here have an idea if you've been firing for 12 hours, I think you have an idea of how much ammunition these people have. I can't make that judgment. I'm assuming that they, somebody there should know, even if you don't get that call na wala na kaming bala, they would know na there have been non-stop gunshots gun for six hours. It's now the 12th hour. Wala na siguro. I'm just saying, no? And that's why I said I'd like to hear from um, Secretary Rojas, who, like me, is a layman, explains it in ways that I can understand better, and the people in general. Pero marinig din natin dun sa technical, and then try natin i-interpret in, in a non-technical manner. Kaya nga, ma'am, ang talagang uh, mahalaga na yung testimony ng bawat isa na kinukuha ng CIDG, at saka yung text record, mga record ng text at mga komunikasyon ay makuha para malaman talaga uh, what did they know. No, it's clear that as of 606 six something in the morning, the grid coordinate was already given. Now, is that sufficient to fire uh, the artillery or not? I, I don't know. They, the AFP has, has, has a protocol. 
question would be, an interesting question would be, what did they know to allow them to fire the three white phosphorus rounds at 16.30? And how is that so different from 0600 in the morning versus 18.30 ng hapon? 18.30 ba? Or 15? Yes, 18.30. 5.45. 5.45? Sorry, 17.45. No? Nung 17.45, nakapagpatak sila ng tatlong white phosphorus. So what were the conditions that allowed them to do that that was different from the morning portion? Di ba? I, 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 can I, think only, I can only surmise that patay na mga, ta mga bata natin tirahin na natin kasi baka may mabuhay pa and by then it's too late. As I said, I can only surmise because I don't have the technical expertise and I wasn't there. That's why, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, even after the Senate hearings, uh, we will be going through this so that, in fact, we can really improve and refine. Ano ba ang, ano ba ang protocols na I think that uh, General Pangilinan was uh, raising his hand, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, well, as I said earlier, I wanted to hear from PNP and uh, AFP. So I, maybe I don't know if General Katapang or or Pangilinan would be in a better position because he's on the ground. So whoever can give us a more clarity. Okay, go ahead, General Pangilinan. Uh, Madam Chair and yeah, Your Honor, um, malaki po ang pagkakaiba yung sitwasyon ng umaga at saka ng hapon. Nung umaga po is wala kaming clear picture, kulang pa kami sa informasyon ng location ng ating friendly forces, yung location ng kalaban, yung location ng mga civilian, ng mga community, kung anong klaseng lugar po ang labanan. Nung hapon, meron na po tayong kumpletong informasyon kasi is nakagather na tayo ng informasyon. Ulitin ko lang po yung sinabi ko kahapon. Sandali lang sir, pwede lang pa, para lang mas maliwanag para sa akin ano, Yung SAF ba na nandoon, familiar sila sa territory such that kaya nilang mag-relay ng, ng specific na information? Kasi that was one of the issues na hindi daw ganun ka-familiar ang SAF na yan dun sa territory. So, can you comment on that? Hindi ko po masasagot yan dahil sila po yung nagkandak ng operation. But as far as communication is concerned between the SAF that is being uh, engaged and the command group where I am staying, wala po kaming contact. Let but, me let me go now then to um, General N N Peñas, no? D did they have enough training in the area to really be able to give those coordinates? Or yes, ma'am. If I may, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, it, yes, they have the familiarity of the area because we have intelligent recognizance of personnel who have been moving in that area before because that has been already done as early as November uh, 29, then the next one was December 13, then this, and then January 25. As to the statement that uh, Jar Pangilinan was saying that they don't have the location, if I may, as early as 622 that they were saying that the South troopers, they forwarded already the location. At 7.53 in the morning, I sent a text message to General Talino. Ito po yung contents ng text message. Kasi during that time, si Police Chief Superintendent Talino was already with the Brigade Commander of the Mechanized Brigade, 7.53 in the morning. No, no location of sub troops, grid coordinate 68006, 65717, and 68234, 65056. Nasa paligid ng first grid coordinate, mga kalaban, and tuloy pa rin heavy firefight, baka pwede hingi artillery support. The response of Police Chief Superintendent Talino to me and that morning, Sir, as of now, nega daw muna artillery at baka may mga civilian at mga bata. Nag-commit ng six armor at about five, at 50 infantry. I sent a text message also to the Brigade Commander at 8.39. Uh, Hener, that's the Brigade Commander of the Mechanized Brigade, ma'am, Your Honor. Hener, good day. Ito location, marami kalaban. GC 688663, request and direct fire. Wala mga civilian doon kanina pa. Our personnel who are deployed in the, in the field, who participated in the operations, they have the, the geographical positioning system. 
a minimum of three per unit. That's why if they were saying that they cannot pinpoint with accuracy their location, I beg to disagree, Your Honor, because they have been provided already the grid coordinates and the locations of the enemy, Your Honor. Thank you. Can, can we bring the, uh, can you continue? Because, and kindly respond to that, because there are two separate messages that, that were sent with um, specific details. Yes, Your Honor. Kaya nga po, pinapaliwanag ko, kulang po yung data. Ah, alam niyo po ba na nalaman namin na may 84th sack pala nung hapon na? Hindi po namin alam na may 84th sack. Yung 84th sack nga po is nalaman namin nung hapon na after we gather all the information. In fact, we do not even know na 55th sack yung naenkwentro. We do not even know na may 46th sack pala. Meron palang 45th sack. And we do not know the locations of those friendly forces. So napakahirap po na mag-de-decide ka na magpa-fire ka ng artillery, this is a bomb, and you do not know kung saan po yung specific na target. Kaya po nabanggit ko kanina na kung pinagsisihan ko ba yung judgment call the time, hindi po. Kasi baka po kung nagpaputok tayo nung mga oras na yon mas marami po tayong uh, casualties o baka mas malaki po ang problema na kinakaharap po natin ngayon. Yun po ang gusto kong ipaabot sa atin. Dahil sa kakulangan ng informasyon na hawak namin during the time, but babalik na naman po ako sa sinasabi ko, if we have a coordination prior to that conduct of their operations, we could have prepared better and we could have provided them the support that they needed. Wala po, hindi po namin kasi nakita yung kanilang concept of operations. Hindi po namin alam yung kanilang dinaanan. Only, nung ma-present na lang po dito ng uh, CIDG, na nalaman namin, o probably kayo din po ay nalaman ninyo, yung pagkakataon na yun, nitong nag-present na lang. And during the time ng inkwentro, wala po tayong picture na ganun. At napakahirap po na mag-imagine ng area of operations. Madam Chair, I have been given a slip that says my time is up. Um, I think this, this discussion has not ended because it's very, if I was your boss, I would simply say to you, mag-usap kayo. And it's as simple as that. I mean, I can ask you so many more questions, but it's just very clear that you didn't communicate the way you should have. My um, last set of questions I will no longer ask because my time is up, but I just want to um, put it on record that it is for um, Mr. Ladiasan, the M-I-L-F-C-C-C-H. I'll ask it in the next round, but it's basically to shed light because you're the only one who has come here to, to provide information on your end. No? And I'll ask that the next round of questions. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to all the resource persons. <laughs>